Good morning to each and every one of you. On behalf of all the board of directors, volunteer leaders, current and past members of ILMEA, and each and every one of our clinicians, I want to welcome all of you to the Illinois Music Education Association All-State Experience. My name is Jake Stauffer, and I have the privilege of serving music education as the ILMEA state president. Now, I know that this isn't Peoria, crisp and cold in late January, and I sure know that not a single one of us thought a year ago that we'd be rolling out of bed on a Saturday morning and interacting with each other by way of Zoom or those of you on YouTube. I certainly never thought that my first speech to the organization would be without all of my best jokes, but just like everything else that we have engaged with and problem solved during the past year, we have found our way here together. A guiding principle of ILMEA throughout this pandemic has been to continue to offer high quality chances for students given our limited options and the continuously updated scientific guidance that we receive. While many of us would much rather be meeting in person and settling in for three great days of music making, we have not been presented with a way to do so in our current environment. So our division presidents and state office staff went to work to bring a wonderful experience to you with clinicians from coast to coast, ranging from composers to jazz musicians, college professors to national recording artists, we sought out and secured top tier clinicians to help make today a meaningful musical opportunity for you. Today is about helping you, the finest musicians that the state of Illinois has to offer, discover even more ways to improve your art. So I hope that you have come today with an open mind and an open heart because I know that our clinicians will be doing their absolute best to impart their knowledge and passion for making music. I'm optimistic that we are nearing the end of our marathon with COVID-19, but I know that doesn't necessarily make us any less tired or any less discouraged. I cannot truly imagine how I would have made it through high school under these circumstances, and I certainly would have been different for the experience. Know that we all care about you, that I care about you, and that I firmly believe that days like today show the resilience and strength in each and every one of us to even just find the light in the darkest of times. Continue to share your talent, your spirit with each of us. We certainly need it. On behalf of ILMEA, I want to thank you for doing that, and I want to congratulate you for persevering to be here today. On that note, I'd like to turn it over to ILMEA's program director, Mrs. Lori Evenhouse, with some important information for all of you. Thanks, Jake. Um, just a few quick reminders as we uh, get started here today. Um, students and directors, you all have places where you can sign in. Uh, the students one is linked on the student information sheet. The director one is linked on the director information sheet. If you need those links along with anything else like the schedule for today or information on how today is going to run, um, there's also a link there for ILMEA Allstate merchandise and apparel that you're welcome to take a look at, order. Um, all of that is on our student director information page. So the direct link to that is ilmea.org student-director-info, but an easier way or more direct way, you can also just go to ilmea.org, scroll down a little bit and you'll see something there that you can click um, for the virtual all state information. So a quick note for any directors who are joining us today, if you do want professional development credit for your participation and watching these masterclasses and our keynote today, make sure you fill out both the sign in and the sign out form. And then that will be coming to you later on next week once we've had a chance to process all of that. Um, I don't really want to take up any more time from our guest speaker today, who I'm so excited to share with you. So Jake, I'm gonna turn it back to you to introduce uh, Dr. Golden. All right, thank you, Lori. And now to truly start our day, it is my pleasure to be able to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Aris Golden. Dr. Golden is the Assistant Director of Bands and Associate Director of the Spartan Marching Band at Michigan State University. In this capacity, Dr. Golden teaches courses in conducting marching band techniques, conducts the Spartan Youth Wind Symphony, is coordinator of the MSU Performing Arts Camps, and this only scratches the surface of her wonderful career and life spent in the service of music education. It is my great honor to introduce Dr. Aris Golden as the keynote speaker of the 2021 ILMEA All-State Student Experience. Good morning, everybody. I am dealing with my second monitor to pull something over, but now I'm gonna look at you. I'm, I'm so excited to be here and so excited to share space with you and your teachers today. I, I hope that you all are eternally proud of yourselves 
for making it to this Allstate experience. I, to, to sound like a typical adult talking to you here for a second, when I was your age, I spent weekends just like this doing what you're doing, just interacting with other people, other musicians and learning and growing. And, and I would argue it's one of the things that got me to where I am today. I would also argue that music is one of the things that has really helped me to remain myself and remain forward thinking and remain um, level headed, for lack of a better word, during this entire pandemic. You know, there's pieces of music that I played when I was in high school honor band, middle school honor band, played when I was in college, played when I was like involved in community bands as I was growing up that I really just went back to during this time. And it really just brought me to a calm place just because music is that place for me. It, it is that centering thing that allows me to clear space in my head and just consider all sorts of things. So again, and if I didn't say it clearly, I'll say it again now, congratulations to each and every one of you that is here today. Your hard work has paid off. And again, I hope you're so proud of yourselves. You know, it, this, this is such a unique experience and it sounds like it's still going to be exactly that and that you're gonna get a ton out of today. So I, I've done a few of these over time. You know, all of us have reported into Zoom to discuss things with people in their classes around the country and around the world. And what I wanted to do was kind of just share some of the questions and answers that I had from those sessions. But I also want you all, if you have questions, please enter them where you can, and I will be glad to answer them as I go through what I'm saying to you today and just share even more information that, with you than I had planned. So one of the biggest questions that I, that I get and that I had for people like me when I was in high school was, why did you want to be a band director? What was it that drew you to the profession that made you want to experience music in that way and be a teacher? And to be honest with you, it took me a long time to figure that out. It's like, why do I want to do this? And quite honestly, I avoided it for a while. So I'll, I will tell you, I have a full four-year degree at political science in addition to a full four-year degree in music education because partway through my, music ed my educational experience at UNC Chapel Hill, I was doing political science, but a new band director showed up. And that new band director and his wife, who was a music education professor, changed the direction of not only my life, but the lives of a lot of other people who were majoring in other things and came back to music because of them. And they're Illinois people. So if you know um, Dr. Jim Heil or Dr. Nancy Whitaker, those are my collegiate teachers who made me literally reconsider what I was doing. And they were so inspirational that they made me go back and take a look at, hey, this music ed thing might actually be the thing for me. And the thing that was attractive was the idea of working with other people and collaborating with other people in making music and just being able to take, at the time I played my saxophone, my saxophone and work on something as an individual to a level of perfection that was satisfying to me. So if, if you're someone who has that experience, you know, make sure that you choose wisely as you go into college and really consider, do I want to do music? How do I want to be involved in music? What does music mean to me as I move forward in life and move forward through college? Um, but because of their inspiration, I went back and reflected and actually returned to school and did a music ed degree. And I do not regret that choice in any way. And I would argue, you know, just because you've made a choice doesn't mean that it, it sticks forever, for lack of a way to put it. You can reconsider, you can reflect, and you can, you can make another choice. You know, you could take another path, and I think that's okay. I think it's okay to explore other things in life, and I think it's okay to really find the thing that speaks to you, that spark that speaks to you, that allows you to find your purpose in what you're doing. So being in the honor bands when I was growing up and being a part of rehearsals in middle school and high school were the things that really made me think about being a band director and a music educator in the first place. And on top of that, my mom and dad were both teachers. So my mom taught elementary school up to sixth grade for 31 years. 
and my dad taught for a decade in the public school. So it's kind of, I was kind of defying my own destiny anyway, to a point, I guess, by choosing political science, but I think in the end, it turned out okay. So if you're going to be a band director and you say you want to be a college band director, say you want my job, I'll vacate it when I retire. So it could, that could be an option. You know, you could, you could work at Michigan State. It's a great place. We won't talk about basketball right now. Illinois basketball, great. Michigan State basketball, we, we've returned home. But we won't talk about that right now. But we will talk about what it means to be in a position like mine. So Mr. Stauffer spoke to it just a little bit. So I'm the assistant director of bands and the associate director of the Spartan Marching Man here at Michigan State. So what does that really mean? Well, that means I get to do pretty much all the things that I love doing in music and, and through the vehicle of band. So on a given day in, on a, in a normal school year, that means that I will get up, I'll go into campus, I'll teach my concert band rehearsal, I will teach a conducting class in the fall, and then I'll go out and I'll do Spartan Marching Man from 4.30 to 6 in the evenings, um, Monday through Friday. Then in the spring, I'll go and I'll teach my concert band and I'll teach a class called Marching Man Methods where I'm teaching future teachers how to administrate and organize and plan for the high school marching man. And that's within just the Monday through Friday work week. Well, what else do I get to do? Well, I get to work with graduate students who are in wind conducting, who want to learn to be college band directors. I get to teach the Spartan Youth Wind Symphony, which is uh, the high school honor band that we have on our campus that meets on Sundays for six times during fall, six times during spring semester. I get to leave campus and go out and do honor bands. I get to leave campus and go to schools and work with school bands. I get to arrange music for the Spartan Marching Man. I get to write drills sometimes for the Spartan Marching Man. I get to do all of these things. And on top of all of that, I get to interact with fans, fantastic students who are in music education or music performance. So my job is chock full, literally, of all the things that I love to do. It's pretty amazing position and I feel very fortunate to, to be in it, to be honest with you. So say for example, that you are going to go to college. This is another question that comes up and you don't want to be a music major. That's not your plan, but you kind of want to still be involved in music. I think you should do that. And I think you should explore, you know, your senior year or junior year if you're starting at that time, what your options are at the universities in which you're interested. So for example, most universities in the Big Ten, which is where MSU is, have at least two music major ensembles and at least one large uh, non-music major. And that can be for band or orchestra or for chorus. So for example, I could speak to Michigan State. We have our wind symphony and our symphony band, which are predominantly music major. We have our concert band, which is a mix of music major and some non-majors. And then we have our campus band, which is a one night a week meeting for that band that has like 150 people in it. So you make all sorts of friends from across the campus. And we also have a concert orchestra and we have men's glee and women's glee clubs that are the same. So it's non-major experiences that allow you to continue on and to continue to make music through college. And it, it doesn't have quite the amount of demand for those groups that pers that your high school experience might have provided, but the concert band and some of the other other ensembles around campus allow that and have a little bit more rigorous schedule if you'd like to keep what you've been doing in high school. So just because you don't want to major in music in college that does not mean that you your instrument just has to live in its case. There are all sorts of opportunities. I would just argue that you need to investigate them. You know. I would also say that the non-major ensembles tend to be non-audition ensembles. So if you just want to play without the stress, the audition, that's available as well. Okay, so it's it's a very rich environment. And, and I would say that's true of all the Big Ten schools. And I would say that that's really true of all the schools in the Midwest in terms of what is available for students. And if you want to be a music major, that's fine too. We would love to have you at any of the Big Ten schools or any of the colleges and universities around. What I would say to you is to really start to investigate that process and investigate what it looks like at the schools you want to attend so that when you are ready to audition or ready to be a part of that process that you know what's, what, what exactly is expected 
even make contact with the person who teaches your instrument called studio teachers. So if you are a trumpet player, clarinet player, flute player, if you're a soprano singer, go find the people that teach and organize the, the learning for the people in the studios so that you can be in contact with them. A lot of them will even offer to teach you a lesson if you come up to the campus where they are, or if you're coming for a campus visit anyway. So there's all sorts of opportunity. What we do want you to do, or at least I know that I do, is just want you to, to continue playing music, like forever, you know, even after you get out of college. There are community bands, there are all sorts of opportunities. And, you know, especially in these times when we're moving from being so, so much away from others and so much not involved with others in our community, I would argue it's time to take care of, not take care of, but take advantage of any and all the opportunities that we can in music. Because it's, I, I know for me, it's such a meaningful experience to be, even just listen to a piece of music that I haven't listened to in a long time just takes me back to a place. Um, finding new music takes me to a different place. So for example, during the pandemic uh, in August, Michael Torkey, T-O-R-K-E, comp American composer released a, uh, a new piece called Being. And it's a multi-movement piece. It's about 45 minutes long and it's uninterrupted. So it plays from beginning to end in one chunk. And it's a musical experience that really just isn't like any other. It's a minimal composition, which means what Mr. Torkey has done is he's taken very small, either rhythmic or musical cells or motives, and he's linked them together in very inventive ways that just and the piece just spins forward in a way that you don't even realize it's been 45 minutes. So if you've never heard of that, if you want to hear some minimal music that's kind of almost pop oriented, Michael Torkey being. I, I, if I had money for every time I've listened to that, I could probably buy myself a really nice dinner here coming up soon. So again, be involved in music. You are already Again, today is your day. The, this event was created for you because your directors and the people in the, the music organizations in Illinois just think the world of you and your abilities and your talents. So take advantage of that. Learn all that you can today. Be in music, continue to be music, in music forever, hopefully. And you know, maybe at some point, We'll, I'll meet some of you in real life. I won't be able to know names and tell who you are because I can't see you on the screen right now. But if we're in the same space, please feel free to come up and introduce yourself and go, hi, Dr. Golden, you spoke to us in, in honor band in 2021, so on and so forth. And I'd love to talk to you. Um, now I hear that there are a few questions that we have. So I think I'm gonna get those shared here. There you go. All right. So. Um... One of the questions you mentioned um, opportunities for students who are musicians at the higher education level. Um, could you talk a little bit about what it looks like to teach music at the higher ed level? So um, I think a lot of times we think just ensembles, but I know, I mean, there are, there's more than that. Um, could you talk a little bit about, you know, some of the different teaching opportunities at, at the um, college and university level? Absolutely. So. I'll, again, I'll speak to Michigan State because that's where I work. You know, so there are three of us who do just strictly bands. Um, then there's two people that do strictly orchestra. Then there's a whole um, group of people that do strictly chorus and choral conducting. And then there's a set of people who do strictly music education. They just teach music education students about music education and how to be teachers. Then there's a whole other group that teaches the studio teachers that teach individual instruments or individual voices. So it's there's a lot that and I should mention our jazz program and we have a really great jazz program that there are people that just specifically teach the art of jazz and the art of jazz ensemble and that kind of thing. So there's all sorts of we have all of those positions to like people who literally just come through the building and tune our pianos. Like there's a person, we have that many pianos. That person manages the tuning and the tuning schedule for all of that. So it's, there's tons of opportunities to teach all sorts of different things. And just because you teach one thing 
doesn't mean that you're siloed away from the other things. So I teach the bands, but I also teach music education courses. And so do my colleagues. So there's all sorts of, and so do the choral conductors and the orchestral conductors. So there, there's a lot that goes on in a college of music, school of music setting that is not available or like readily like seen by the eye. It's not necessarily visible because it's so layered. But if you're really curious, go to a school of music website, especially in the Big Ten area, and just look at the depth of like people and faculty and opportunities for for different genres of music and and different you know uh, professions within the profession that exist for people to participate in. So thinking about your position then at MSU, what does this year look like for you? Um, what does it look like for you as a as a musician? What does it look like for you as an ensemble director? I mean, because every everywhere everyone's trying their best. What does that look like for you? So for me this year, I've done everything but conduct a band. Literally, I've taught all my classes. I was talking to y'all earlier. I manage the virtual ensemble because we have a group of students who are like, we don't want to play in the ensembles right now. That, that I've worked with and curated a, a different type of curriculum for them. Uh, but my other two colleagues in band are doing small ensembles. So we're allowed to have uh, groups of up to, up to 15 wind and percussion players. And we've just, just done chamber music the entire, well, let me take that back. The graduate students have done it the entire academic year. The undergraduate students here were not allowed on campus first semester just to keep our population density down and to make sure things were safer for graduate students who had things like labs and like terminal projects that they needed to complete. And then spring semester undergraduates have come back to campus and they've just started to participate in these small ensembles as well. So it, it's, again, I've done everything but conduct a band. My job has been completely normal, like except for that. And I will tell you what I do, one of the things I miss the most, I miss my concert band, but I super miss Spartan Youth Wind Symphony and meeting with them on a, on a Sunday basis because they are, they're fun people. They're your age, they're high school age students. So they come to campus that one day a week. And we really, we have a, I feel like a really great time working together, putting concerts together and so on. So normal, but not normal. That's how my life has been. That seems, that seems about right. <laughs> um, so we had one last question, and this might overlap a little bit with um, some of what you've talked about already. Um, so a lot of our students are starting starting to or in the depth of planning for college. So what, it, what advice would you leave them with if they're not sure, certain what path they want to take? They know they want to do music, but might not be certain what that looks like professionally. Um, so like I said, this might overlap a little bit, but what advice would you leave the students as they start to think about their lives as a musician moving forward? It, it, I would argue that if that is your, that, that's the thing that sparks you, that, that is the thing that makes you feel purposeful as a, as a person in the world, then you need to do that thing or you're going to, you'll circle back to it. It will come back. I am living proof that you can try to, but no, you're going to circle back because the thing that, to me, the thing that gives you the feeling that you're involved in, in the world and in society and contributing is probably the thing that you should do because that's going to be the thing that allows you to be and support you being who you are. That's my opinion. There you go. Um, I, I, the world is always going to need people who perform music and it's always going to need people who teach music. I it, There's no way around it. Now, right now, things look a little different than what we're accustomed to. There's no way around that statement either, right? It just, it, it, it just, this is where we are. Now, do I think that things are going to recover? Oh, yeah. I think they absolutely will. And I think all the things that we have learned from this situation are going to help us come back and be better than we were before. Just because we know more and we know how to provide more opportunity and we know how to provide more support in ways that maybe we wouldn't have explored before because we didn't have to. But now that we have, I know, I know for me as a teacher, there's like about a list of 50 things that I've learned that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use that, just wait. 
if this is going to get implemented this is going to be awesome this is what it's going to look like so for you all if you're considering music performance or ed music education you're going to be coming in as all the people that are like my age are like rejuvenated and kind of like let's go let's do these things so it's going to be i think a really unique learning environment and i think we're all going to benefit from this and then if you're teaching or you're performing you're going to be able to go out into the world and share all the things that we share with you so just everything's going to be reinvigorated i'm i'm excited about it to the point where i'm like can we just get this done can we move along can we can we can we okay i'll stop but seriously i think it's i think it's a uniquely um like positive like for moving for just forward motion it's 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 at the end of the tunnel so we know it's there as we all know we just have to get through the the end of what we're experiencing now to get to that that end of the tunnel All right. Well, I want to, on behalf of ILMEA, I want to thank Dr. Golden for just an absolutely wonderful experience this morning, getting a chance to share some wonderful experiences in her life. Uh, I would also like to thank Mrs. Darcy Nenza, Executive Director of ILMEA, and Mrs. Lori Evenhouse, Communications Manager uh, of ILMEA, for making this day possible. Their dedication to all of us and their countless hours of work behind the scenes have been truly the engine that have made today go. So it's time to get started. Students, please take this time to transition to your first session of the day. We hope you have a wonderful experience and thank you all for participating in the ILMEA All-State Student Experience. Thank you all, stay safe and take care.